Praise the Lord. How are you doing? Amen. This is Pastor Houston. Amen. Coming to you by the way of YouTube. Feel like thank God for His grace and His mercy and His divine. Feel like thank God, amen, for being, amen, a minister of the gospel. Thank God for declaring His truth, declaring His word, declaring His commandments. Amen. Before we know there's no other way but Jesus. Amen. Truly, in, 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 the, in the world that we live in today, there may be many ways. There may be many ways that some might think to get to heaven, but there's only one way, and that is through the salvation way. Because the Bible says in John 3 and 5, a certain man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And it went back down and said, except ye be born again of the water and the spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen. In order to see the kingdom of God, you have to be born again. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away, but behold, all things become new. And the Bible says in Acts 2.38, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now some folks say, well, God's going to bless one select church. Now I, I, I'm going to have to make a difference with that because in the word of God, there is nothing that's been said about the nomination. <clears throat> Amen. And even though God is not caught up with the nomination, he's not caught up in religion, he's not caught up in tradition, only thing God is concerned about is his word being perfected in the lives of his people. Only thing God is concerned about is his word being made perfect in our life. Amen. King David said, Lord, help me to hide your word in my heart that I may not sin against thee." Because the Bible says, if any man, whoever so is born of God does not commit sin. Now, you may say, well, that's contradictory because, hey, man, I'm born again, I'm saved, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, but I still commit sin. Well, I still smoke, I still drink, I still chase women. But when you make up your mind to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, when you make up your mind to want to live for God, you got, your mind got to be made up all the way. Regardless of whatever distractions you're going through, whatever temptation that you're facing, no matter what you're going through in your life, God will give you that special grace and that ability to overcome the attacks of the enemy. The Bible says in Ephesians 6 and 10, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The Bible said, Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand against the wines of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on his armor that you may be protected from the fiery darks of the enemy. Because 24-7, the enemy is, is always working out ways to destroy you and to distract you and to cause you to miss heaven. Let not 10, 2010 be the year that you missed your destiny. Don't allow the enemy to cause you to abort your destiny. In 2010 should be the year that you should say, Lord, I'm going to fulfill my destiny. I'm going to fulfill the purpose and the plan that you have for me. I'm going to walk in that open heaven, that open access to all the things that you have for me. You got to make up in your mind that I'm going to live on an open heaven. But in order to live on an open heaven, you must be born again. You must be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and live sin free. I'm not saying you're not going to be tempted, you're not going to be tried, you're not going to fall at times. Yes, you are. But if you happen to fall, get back up and try again. Get back up and try again. For the Bible says, if we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, we have the advocate Father. Because the Bible says in John 1, 9, if we confess our sin, he is just to forgive us of our sins. But today I just want to say that this is your year of spiritual breakthrough. This is your year of deliverance. This is your year of healing. This is your year to get to know the Lord God more than ever now. Apostle Paul said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection 
and the fellowship of his suffering, and being made comfortable unto, his, unto the death, lest by any means I may attain. Let no one, let no man, let no one tell you that it's difficult to live for God. Let no one tell you that you can't fulfill destiny in this life. Destiny awakes you. What will you do with the power, the ability, the blessings that God has prepared for you? What would you do with it when it's presented to you? Will you lie dormant on it? Or will you sit on it? Or you just let it fade away? Or are you going to capitalize and utilize what God has given you to do in 2010? Let not this be the year that you abort your dreams, your destiny, your promises. Don't let this be the year that you're going to miss out on so much in your life. Young brother, young sister, hip hop is not the hip hop. It's not going to take you all away. It's not all about promiscuous sex. It's not all about trying to get in the in crowd. It's not all about trying to be all hip hop again, the fashion and bling bling and whatever you want to call it. God has a plan for you too, young people. And to all the pastors and leaders and apostles and prophets, especially those who call themselves apostles and prophets. We all know that that's a heavenly call. And the way that you know that you've been called is when signs and wonders is following you everywhere you go. You will know when you go into a place that the atmosphere will begin to change. And the atmosphere will begin to receive the presence of God. The apostles and prophets, that's a very serious call. That call is not to be abused, played with, manipulated. This call is to be taken seriously. And those who calling themselves that and you're not taking it seriously, you need to resign from that post and sit down and get restored until God call you back up. Hallelujah. Praise the name of God. Jesus died for each and every one of us, and he gave his life. He gave his life for you and I, that we may have a right to eternal life. My brothers and sisters, saved or unsaved, or whoever you may be, atheist, or whatever you want to be, or Muslim, whatever, Islam, whatever, whatever you call yourself in this life. Jesus died for you. Jesus made a way for you. He died and took all those things just for you. That you will have the right to an open heaven. He died for you that you will have an abundant life. And that you will have peace and that you will have freedom. And that you will be, that you will be spared from the wrath of hell itself. He died that his blood would cover you from the death angel. But yet many of us have taken it for granted. Whoever you are, if you are listening, don't take this for granted in 2010. Let God be your God in 2010. And just know that God has great things in store for you. And I will, I will be, with, be back with another video. God bless you and you have a wonderful day. I mean, a wonderful day, wonderful night, or whatever time it may be over there where you at. God bless you.